Hello, welcome to Iggy's Toy Parade and Soldier Review. This is your host, Iggy. Yay. Thank you for that. Well, howdy, partner. Welcome to the OK Corral. Well, not really, guys. This is actually a reproduction of the corral used in the Roy Rogers playset, uh, which was released in 19... 19- 52, I believe, and uh, it was released along with Mineral City, which was a very ambitious playset, which included um, some tin lithograph Old West buildings. It was quite, ex- excuse me, I got the hiccups all of a sudden, uh, quite an exciting uh, playset for the time, and still is, actually, if you think about it. But uh, let's take a look at what we've got here today. I've got some furniture for you to look at, too. By the way, in the background is a general store. Um, What was the name of that town in Wyoming? The general store opened in 1892 and then closed in the early 1900s. Uh, The Old West was changing pretty rapidly at the time. Uh, The postmaster also... uh, would operate out of this general store, which reminds me of the uh, postmaster at Calico, California. Uh, There was a canyon that he would have to go up uh, to deliver mail to some miners that were working up there. And he didn't feel good. So what he did is he put a mailbag on his dog and sent his dog and his dog delivered the mail, and they, they gave him treats, and the dog came back, and this became a routine. Uh, a couple of ruffians tried to waylay the dog and steal the mail. However, the dog outsmarted them. That's pretty sad when you're outsmarted by a dog. Anyway, the dog uh, took a different trail and went around them. But I always thought that story was kind of cool that the dog was delivering mail like that. Very neat. Anyway, this furniture here is a reproduction of Mark's furniture that they featured in their very first uh, rodeo playset and also in their Mineral City uh, playset. Now, I do have a section of fence. What did I do with it? Oh, here it is. Here's what the corral fence looked like in the very earliest rodeo play set. It was like, oh, you know what? I need to turn on this light. Here we go. That's better. Uh, This is what the fence looked like. You can see it's a little different. Now, this fence here in later versions of the corral, they would use this uh, only in white. But in this one... Uh, you can see the boards are smooth, and they also use this in their farm play set. This fencing in their farm play set. Now, in the original, it would say on here Roy Rogers, and then it would say Double R Bar Ranch along here. And Double R Bar refers to the branding iron that. Uh, they would have used at the Roy Rogers Ranch. I don't think Roy Rogers ever had a real ranch, though. Anyway, it refers to they would have an R like this, and then over here they would do another R, and then bar, bar. That's what they mean by double R bar ranch, and it refers to the branding iron. So this is what the earliest rodeo playset uh, fence piece looked like. So let's show you what that looks like over here. Here's the very first rodeo playset. I actually have this cabin, an original of that, and I have a reproduction of this gateway and fence. And this is part of the fencing. I think I put the gateway into uh, storage so I don't have it handy. Uh, I do have, you know what, guys? I do have the... Um, the bunkhouse. So let me stand up and show that to you, okay? Get a nice overview of the furniture. See that picture? I got that for a dollar. Can you imagine that? 
And here's the bunkhouse. I got a Rev War figure in the in the window there. Uh, my nephew bought that at a, a a bar or saloon in New York City. So that's pretty cool. All right, so let's go back to here. So uh, as you can see here, this also shows some of the furniture. Uh, I don't have any of these uh, bunk beds, but I do have these items here. And I'll come up here and, and show them to you. There's a desk and chairs and there's saloon doors and a bench and table, a keg with a spigot, barrel, uh, something for the hotel room, a dresser with a mirror. Uh, they have various retail counters. Uh, this here with the different boxes would have been used for putting type uh, for the uh, uh, newspaper. That's what this is over here, printing a newspaper. And this was for the movable type. And that's what the girl told me. She said, you're not my type. I didn't know how to type, so I'm not surprised. This is a sort of a neat item that you wouldn't expect. It's a uh, roll of barbed wire. So I, I think that's kind of cool. And we have beds for the hotel, uh, coat rack, various lamps and uh, tables of all sorts, gun rack, a, a crate of uh, rifles. Here's a barber chair. That's pretty cool. Back in the day, the barber would also be the dentist. Can you imagine going to the dentist back then? No, thanks. They would probably uh, yank on that thing and you'd wish you were dead. Here's another different style of bed. Here's a bank teller's cage. And uh, there's the bar for the saloon and a little doctor's case. So the furniture is is pretty cool. It's all um, it's all available from BMC, and you get like forty pieces. As, as you can see here, it's quite extensive. The number of uh, Western pieces you get, and these would all fit really well with this. This is from the uh, Britain's Old West or Legends of the West. Was it called? I'm not sure. I can't remember. Um, these are very expensive online, by the way. I saw a saloon, and they won $75 for it. And I was like, ooh, I, uh, I don't think I could afford it. By the way, did you know that Wyatt Earp was a teetotaler? I, I don't – it's hard for me to picture that. But anyway, Doc Holliday certainly wasn't a teetotaler. He's probably in too much agony to do that. Okay, uh, the saloon looks just like this, except the, see how this overhang here? It's actually straight and has a railing that goes around. And then, of course, it says uh, saloon or golden nugget. I think it was called the golden nugget saloon. Although later versions of this just said saloon, I think. And over here, I have the Streets of La Radio, um, Radio, Streets of Radio. Hello, and welcome to Iggy's Radio, where the hits just keep on coming. Uh, D. Speakerman is my friend, Doug. I've known him for many years now, about 25, 26 years. And uh, he's a big guy, and he would make a great blacksmith. Uh it's funny, uh, Doug is a pretty peaceful guy, but man, when he gets mad, you better clear out. Uh, I remember once we were at a Civil War reenactment in Mississippi, and we decided to flank the Confederate column. So we went through the, uh, the uh, brush that was overgrown on the side of the road that we were on, because we could hear the Confederates on the other side. 
and I got stuck in the brush and Doug just came up and I yelled out, Doug. And I was like literally hanging in the air, stuck in this brush. And he grabbed me by the collar and just yanked me right out of there like I was a rag doll. Uh, Doug's a big guy. Don't mess with Doug. That's all I can say. He's a pretty cool dude. I've known him, like I said, a long time. So who are these cowboys I got in here? I decided to set up sort of a makeshift shootout at the OK Corral, which, by the way, this is misleading because the shootout was not in the OK Corral. It was near it, and it was on, I think, an alley called Allen Street. The shootout lasted like 30 seconds, which is funny because it looms so large in the history of uh, the Old West. In fact, the 1957 version of uh, Shootout at the OK Corral, starring Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas, uh, the shootout lasts eight minutes, and the real shootout was just 30 seconds, but they fired off 60 rounds, so two rounds a second. There's a lot of lead being thrown. Uh, in the shootout, Wyatt was, I think, the only one that wasn't wounded on the Earp side. And then on the Cowboy side, they called themselves the Cowboys. They were a gang of uh, cattle rustlers and bank robbers, stagecoach robbers, troublemakers. And uh, the two McLowry brothers were killed. And I think his name was Jimmy Clanton. I have in this book I have some pictures I can share with you about the shootout at the OK Corral. But I thought you'd get a kick out of seeing it set up like this even though this is has nothing to do with historical reality. So, uh I mentioned that this furniture you first makes an introduction with the uh rodeo uh a ranch playset. Let me see if I can. Oh, here it is. I got it marked. Now, here is the Roy Rogers Ranch. You can see it says Double R Bar Ranch, Roy Rogers. And they have what is known as Chubby Cowboys. And here's two character figures one of Dale Evans and one of Roy Rogers. I actually met Dale Evans in person. And uh, promptly insulted her. I was five years old. My mom walked me over to meet her. And she said, well, say hello, Richie. And I said, I like Roy better. And, of course, Dale was very gracious. She laughed. Uh, I was a weird kid, let me tell you. I said some stuff that it was pretty weird. Anyway, here, here's that furniture I was talking about. There's the uh, coat rack and the benches, barber chair, beds and whatnot. And that's all available through BMC. So if you have a Mineral City playset, which let me show you that again, because I, I think I overlooked uh, it real quickly. Isn't that awesome? They did several versions of this, by the way. I think one of them had a one-story building on the end. And uh, they changed what, you know, what these buildings, the names of these buildings. That's a pretty cool playset. Now, my brother Robert, my older brother Robert, got a Roy Rogers playset when he was a boy, and he has absolutely zero memory of it. So how do I know that he got that? Uh, my sister described it in minute detail, everything that the playset came with. And I was looking at the picture of it while she described it. And I go, yep, that checks, that checks, that checks. I mentioned that to my brother and he got kind of mad. Uh, he didn't remember ever getting such a thing. And I think it's because my brother Robert was more into sports than he was into toys like a great present for him would have been a baseball bat and a baseball catcher's mitt. Uh, baseball was his favorite, of course. And I think he played Little League. Uh, uh, I think I've seen a, him in a Little League uniform. Okay, 
So what are we looking at? Let's. Oh, I mentioned that I was going to show you. Look how dusty everything is here. They probably have it closed off to the public, and you look through a window. And speaking of looking through a window, I'm going to show you a coffin that you're not going to believe. Okay, so here's the Earp brothers. Uh, one of the Earps was seriously wounded in an ambush, and the other one was uh, killed in a uh, a planned assassination. And uh, Wyatt was unscathed in all these difficulties with the Cowboys. And he later moved to L.A. and died in 1929. I think the oldest brother was Virgil. Then Wyatt and then Morgan. He said they, he looks rather stern in this photograph, but... Uh, they said that he was a personable guy until he got angry. And I thought, well, that's everybody. Everybody's like that. Uh, here's a picture of what Tombstone looked like. Look at that street. It's all muddy and it's got uh, road apples all over the place. My grandpa used to say, Richie, how do you like them road apples? And I asked my grandma, what does he mean by that? And she said, well, road apples is horse poop. So I guess my grandfather was saying, what do you think of all that shit? <laughs> anyway, I never knew what he was talking about until years and years later. So there's Tombstone. I've been to Tombstone. All right, let me see here. I want to show you. Okay, here we are. There's, I think, Boot Hill. And here's um, uh, Billy. I said Jimmy, didn't I? It's Billy Clanton and the McLowries. And uh, Ike Clanton uh, tried to get uh, murder charges pressed against um, Wyatt for the murder of his son, I guess it was. And, you know, they they built um, the county courthouse for Cochise County in Tombstone, and it still exists to this day, and you can go on a tour of it. It's a rather impressive building, the courthouse. Uh, Tombstone was founded, I think, shortly after 1877, when silver was struck. And the brothers who found silver there... Uh, they were told the only thing you're going to find there is a tombstone. So allegedly, that's how the town got its name. At one point, it had 10,000 residents. Uh, today, it's uh, somewhat of a tourist trap. And the streets are loaded with tourists from Germany for some reason. So as you're walking down the streets of Tombstone, just yell out, Nick Schiessen, Nick Schiessen! which is don't shoot. Um, let me see if I can find a picture of the guys who founded the, the silver mine. That's these guys right here. And a friend. They were brothers and, and a friend. And there's an early view of Tombstone. It looks like a kind of town where you could get in a lot of trouble because there's nothing to do at night. So it had a lot of gambling and violence due to drunkenness, uh, prostitution and whatnot. All right, guys, that's all I've got for you. So what are we looking at here? We're looking at the furniture, Mark's furniture for their Mineral City playset and Rodeo Ranch Bunkhouse. And as you can see, it's pretty complete. They give you everything you can think of. I accidentally ordered two sets of this. What I'm going to do with all that, I have no idea. I don't have enough buildings to put all this stuff in. It's not quite the right size for this, but it does work very well with the detail buildings. And probably with tempo buildings, too. 
I was going to ask my brother, well, he never has spare time. <laughs> He's always busy doing something. If he could paint Roy Rogers on here like the original. Okay, guys, let's go to Roy Rogers Ranch. And uh, we don't necessarily need to hang out in the corral. I don't want to get shot by uh, one of these guys over here, these cowboys. Um, did you guys ever see the shootout at the OK Corral with Burt Lancaster and Kirk Douglas? It has absolutely nothing to do with the actual shootout. It's amazing how different it is. But, you know, that's Hollywood, I guess. Uh, the White Earp movie with Kevin Costner is probably the most historically accurate. But my favorite is Tombstone with... Uh, Kurt Russell and Val Kilmer. I thought those guys were fantastic. And the shootout was really good. Well, I'll be a daisy. Okay, guys, that's all I got for you. I'm going to say goodbye. Adios, amigos.